I'm Lee Mermelan, and in this video we're going to look at private previewing with Ableton Live's Q mode. Okay, so by private previewing, what we mean is something along the lines of the traditional DJ Q. So a DJ will have a deck A and a deck B, and what they have set up on their mix set is the ability to send some of the music they want to the front of house, to the main mix, and then they have their own private preview of maybe the next song they're going to bring in, see whether it suits what they're doing, maybe if it's old DJing, do the beat matching as well. So that's the setup we're going to go for in Ableton Live. And the reason for this can be from a DJing point of view where we want to audition things in our browser to see which song we're going to load in next, but it can go beyond that and we can look at it as a way of being able to improvise or pre-prepare materials in the moment when we're jamming with other people to make sure we're happy with it before we reveal it to the audience. So looking at our setup here, I've got the traditional deck A and deck B to start with. So I've got one song loaded in on deck A and I've got nothing loaded in on deck B yet. Now you'll be used to this behavior where everything we hear comes through outputs one and two, our left and right stereo mix. So if I press play and then preview the song in the actual um, the live browser, you'll hear how we'd normally hear it. Okay, so I was auditioning through the track just to see quickly what was in there, but the whole idea is if these files are prepared, we can audition this um, and see what we want to bring in next. Now at home, that's obviously fine. You, you, you listen to what you want to listen to, but if you're in a performance environment, you don't want to do that. You want to have front of house and the cue mix separate. So if you have the luxury of an audio interface with more than just the one and two stereo outputs, we can route the cue mix to a separate set of outputs and then tell our headphones or our headphone output on our interface to listen to these other outputs that we're sending it to. But today we're working with a limited output. We've got probably what many of you have at home, which is a stereo one and two out. So it could be the same as the output on the side of your laptop all the way through to a, a nicer interface, but it still only has a main one and two output. So what we're gonna utilize here is a headphone splitting lead and that allows us to separate the left signal from the right. So this isn't a headphone sharing device. It's not sending the left and the right to here and the left and the right to here. It's sending the left to here and the right to here. So it's important that you get a splitter cable. So that's what's set up here, which is what you're hearing right now. You're obviously hearing my master output. You're hearing my mix. We're gonna change that behavior now. So we're gonna go to the Q out. Now the Q out is everything that's from previewing through to things that we might send down this Q mode, this Q mix bus. So I'm gonna go and set Q out to be number one and then the master route I'm gonna to set to be number two. So there's a compromise happening straight away. We're sending our mix signal to one output. So it's actually a mono output and we're using the other half of that stereo signal, the other mono signal as our Q mix. But as soon as we do that, and we separate the Q out, go into a different destination to the master route, we can change from this solo mode that's normally here and enable it to be Q mode. And you'll notice every track has a different symbol on it. So normally it's solo, and when we do that, it's a headphone icon instead. So let's do the same thing. Let's preview the track that we want to bring in, but because the actual Q um, mix, which usually comes from the live browser when we're previewing samples, now runs to output one, we'll hear the song that's currently playing on one side, and we'll hear the preview, the private preview on the other side. Okay, so at this point I could go through many of the songs and find in the moment what works in a DJ context. And then when I'm ready, I can drag that into the track. And of course, when I'm ready to play it to the audience, I can press play and use the, the, the volume faders or the cross fader to be able to blend this in and make a mix myself. So let's extend beyond that. Let's go into this kind of live preparation, jamming kind of environment. So I'm gonna leave that song playing that's playing right now and I'm going to actually preview an idea before I let the audience know what it is. So this could be a context where I'm with another person, maybe with Ableton Live. Maybe we've both got laptops. We've both got just the stereo output from our laptops, and one side of our stereo signal is going to the main mixing console, which then goes to the, the PA system, and then the other ones we've plugged into a set of headphones so we can preview what we're doing and just be one step ahead of the audience with getting ideas together. 
So I'm gonna play that song and I'm actually going to, I've got an acid sound loaded in on this track here. Now I don't want the audience to hear it. So I've got two options. I can either just disable the track so we don't hear it, just mute it, or I can turn it down so it can't be heard. Either way, it's not going to the main output, the mix out. So once I've done that, if I double click in here and then start programming in some notes, I can one, figure out maybe what musical key I have to work in based on what's already happening in the jam session. And secondly, I can start working on an idea in a live scenario. And when it's ready, I then bring it to the audience. Okay, so I found out what key it was, I came up with a simple pattern, and now I'm ready to let the audience hear that. So the key thing is here is to disable it from the cue mix, just so I don't hear it through my headphones anymore. If I need to, because I'm, I'm doing some things that I really need to hear better than the audience are hearing, maybe my sound is low in the mix, I can keep that cue mix on while I'm still bringing it into the main mix for the audience as well. So what I'm gonna do is slowly increase the volume of my idea, and we'll hear it come out of that one side that's going to the front of house. Okay, so I've previewed the sound. I've figured out if I wanna load something in and play it alongside the, the song that's already playing. Then I've put it in another context where I've designed an idea and I've got it right in my headphones before bringing it into the mix for the audience to hear. There's one more thing to mention here is the actual cue volume level. This is gonna be important in a situation, especially in a loud environment, where you may need to change the volume of your private preview separately from what everyone else is hearing in front of house. So we have the actual volume here for the the cue volume the preview volume um, it makes sense in a in a live situation to not necessarily rely on that being part of your laptop setup and, and releasing yourself from there and working with something that's a, a controller so we can have this more like a dj mixer so what i'm going to do is just go to midi map mode press on that particular dial and then i'm going to just turn a parameter and then throughout this you know hypothetical jam situation i can turn this up or down as i need to to be able to hear what I'm working on based on what else is going on in my environment as well. <laughs> 